Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. The Moon has always been an object of fascination for mankind. It's a prominent view in our night sky, a moon massive and close enough that its beautiful and eerie details are visible with the naked eye. Mankind stepped on the moon over five decades ago, but to this day, there's still so much we don't know about it. And that's why we keep going back and keep exploring. While the moon seems like a very different place from Earth, there's one thing that excites scientists about future colonization prospects. There is increasing evidence of water on the moon. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Join with me today as we follow the progress numerous space agencies around the world have made to find out once and for all whether the moon's surface contains water. Luna 24 was an ambitious robotic probe of the Soviet Union in 1976. It successfully landed on the moon, drilled into the lunar surface about 2 meters deep, and sent about 170 grams of lunar soil samples back to Earth. Of greatest surprise to the scientists was the detection of water within the return sample. Around 0.1% of the sample was water, and they found that the concentration of water increased with depth. However, like the very trace amounts of water detected in samples obtained during earlier moon missions, for example Apollo 11, this was assumed to be a contamination from Earth. The question whether there is water on the moon remained unanswered. In 1994, NASA's Clementine mission showed that permanently shadowed areas that haven't received any sunlight in billions of years do exist near the moon's south pole. As a result of this, there was a lot of excitement in the science community about whether there could be frozen ice at the bottom of these craters, protected from the harsh rays of the sun, where the temperatures would never rise above about minus 173 degrees Celsius. Any water ice at the bottom of these craters could probably exist indefinitely at these temperatures. Excited by this discovery, NASA launched the Lunar Prospector spacecraft shortly afterwards in 1998 specifically to hunt for clues that water may exist there. While it didn't give us any conclusive answers to the mystery, it certainly added to the intrigue. The Lunar Prospector detected large amounts of hydrogen at the Moon's poles using spectroscopy from orbit. Data from Prospector suggested that there could be somewhere between 10 to 300 million tons of water ice scattered inside craters around the lunar poles. But large amounts of hydrogen do not necessarily mean the presence of water, it could also be water's closest chemical relative, hydroxyl. The Prospector spacecraft subsequently crashed into the Moon's south pole in 1999, with NASA scientists hoping the impact would blast ejector into space, lit up by the sun, so that scientists could use spectroscopy to prove the existence of water in the dark craters of the Moon using Earth-based telescopes. Unfortunately, no water ice was detected from the Lunar Prospector's impact. The mystery continued. Japan's Seleni, or Kaguya spacecraft, was launched in 2007, and its mission was to take high-resolution images of the Moon and map the lunar surface. But it also wasn't able to detect signs of water ice in permanently shadowed craters around the south pole of the Moon. So, after 18 months of orbiting, it too purposefully crashed into the Moon, hoping that this time it would release enough ejector into space for Earth-based observatories to work with. But again, no evidence for water was found. In 2008, India's first Moon mission, Chandrayaan-1, was launched. Chandrayaan-1 was different from previous missions in that instead of relying on sensors to detect water from a distance, India included an impactor that could specifically detect water in its gaseous form through spectroscopy as it came in close proximity to the spacecraft. Scientists believed water vapor could be in the extremely tenuous atmosphere of the Moon just above these craters. The impactor probe was released from the main body of the spacecraft and descended for 25 minutes before it crashed near a crater at the south pole of the Moon. As it descended, it sent the data back to the Chandrayaan-1 mothership, 
and within that data was the answer scientists had been looking for all these decades. A confirmation of water. And a few months later, the Moon Mineralogy Mapper instrument aboard Chandrayaan-1, using spectroscopy from orbit, also detected the presence of water on the Moon. But NASA wanted more proof. They launched their own Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite mission, as well as the LRO, an orbiter you will be very familiar with if you follow this channel. LCROSS was a simple, low-cost, fast-track mission, and it had one main objective, which was to once and for all confirm the presence or absence of water ice in a permanently shadowed crater near a lunar polar region. It had a simple, straightforward, yet very clever design. In an unusual move, the first stage of the Atlas V rocket LCROSS was launched from stayed attached to the spacecraft, and upon reaching the moon, it was released to crash into one of the dark craters at the south pole of the moon. This impact was similar to how Lunar Prospector and Japan's Kaguya probes crashed into the moon to eject a debris plume that rose above the lunar surface. But unlike them, the LCROSS spacecraft itself flew through the debris and collected data without relying on Earth-based observatories, which clearly weren't very reliable for studying small plumes of debris. As the debris cloud rose above the crater's rim, it was exposed to sunlight, and any water ice and other molecules of interest were vaporized and broken down into their basic components, which the sensors on board LCROSS were able to detect only for it to crash into the moon too, after accomplishing its task. This combination of collisions produced a large plume of surface material, which the LRO was left to study. The data sent back from this mission showed that the lunar soil within shadowy craters is rich in useful materials, such as hydrogen gas, ammonia and methane, which could be used to produce fuel for space missions and it even settled the debate of whether water was present, as the data heavily suggested that hydrogen found at the lunar poles does indeed belong to crystals of water ice. And it doesn't stop there. Recently, NASA's SOFIA discovered water on the sunlit surface of the Moon. Its data suggests that water on the Moon may not just be limited to cold and shadowed places, but may be distributed across the lunar surface. Sophia has found that the Clavius Crater, one of the largest craters visible from Earth, has water in concentrations of 100 to 412 parts per million. To put that into perspective, the Sahara Desert has 100 times the amount of water than what Sophia detected in the lunar soil. So yes, that is an astonishingly low quantity, and it might not be of much use to us but it helps us in learning about the lunar surface and how it works. It raises questions like how water is created and how it persists on the harsh, airless lunar surface. Without a thick atmosphere, water on the sunlit surface should be lost to space. Yet somehow there still is some water. Something is either generating the water or something must be trapping it there. There are several hypotheses as to why this might be happening. Micrometeorites raining down on the lunar surface, carrying small amounts of water, could deposit the water on the lunar surface upon impact. Another possibility is that a two-step process whereby the sun's solar wind delivers hydrogen to the surface and causes a chemical reaction with oxygen-bearing minerals in the soil to create hydroxyl Meanwhile, the bombardment of micrometeorites could be transforming that hydroxyl into water. It could then be trapped into tiny bead-like structures in the soil that form out of the high heat created by micrometeorite impacts. Or the water could be hidden between the grains of lunar soil and sheltered from sunlight. Water is known as the oil of space, and finding a successful, affordable way to mine it on the moon could be game-changing in the space industry. It can be recycled inside a lunar habitat and used for drinking water or washing. It could also be used to help plants grow on the moon, which are needed to nourish future lunar colonists. But the biggest and most immediate application for lunar water is making rocket propellant. 
Hydrogen and oxygen are two of the biggest materials that are used to power rockets right now. You see, getting stuff into space from Earth is a very fuel-intensive and expensive process. And the deeper into space you want to go, the more fuel you need, and the more fuel you have to carry. Having to bring all this from Earth heavily limits space exploration. But the Moon has one-sixth of the Earth's gravity. So if we are able to successfully produce rocket propellant on the Moon, it's less resource intensive and transporting propellant from the Moon to other locations in space would be nowhere near as expensive as transporting it from Earth. And actually, getting something from the Moon to low Earth orbit is less resource intensive than sending it from Earth itself, even though that adds 300,000 kilometers to the journey. So the presence of water on the Moon could help make space missions more affordable and dramatically increase our capabilities of exploring the solar system. Now, NASA's Prime 1 mission is coming up, and it is expected to launch in December 2022. We know water ice exists in some of the dark craters, but does it exist in all of them? The objective of the Prime 1 mission is to land a drill and mass spectrometer near the south pole of the Moon. Similar to Prime 1 is ESA and Roscosmos's Prospect mission which, should this mission still go ahead, is scheduled to be launched in 2023, and it too will drill beneath the surface in the South Pole region of the Moon and extract samples, expected to contain water ice and other chemicals. This will test processes that could be applied for resource extraction in the near future. India is also planning to launch Chandrayaan-3, its third lunar mission in August 2022. But most interesting of all is NASA's Artemis Lunar Rover, the Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or VIPER, the first ever resource mapping rover on another celestial body. It is planned to be launched in November 2023 and will explore the relatively nearby but extreme environment of the Moon firsthand in search of ice and other potential resources. It will help us find where the Moon's ice is easiest to access and most likely to be found. The first resource maps of the Moon will mark a critical step forward for NASA's Artemis missions to establish a long-term presence on the surface of the Moon. So there we have it, almost everything you could want to know about water on the Moon. Here's an interesting answer to a question I've always had that Skillshare was recently able to solve for me. As I research for my videos, I often come across space art in search engines, and it always astonished me exactly how much there is out there. Just by looking at them, I would have thought that they are really hard to produce, but I was recently browsing through Skillshare and came across a class by Scott Stewart teaching people exactly this, and amazingly, this great class is able to teach you how to make comparable images in only 20 minutes. Even I, someone who is not so great with Photoshop, was able to do it myself very easily by following along. Skillshare has thousands of creative and inspiring courses and is really a great resource to improve technical and creative know-how about a variety of topics. If you want to check Skillshare's library of classes out, or even just this course by Scott, the first 1,000 people to use my code ASTRUM or use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, so I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching. If you found value in the video, please consider subscribing and liking. Also, thanks to my patrons and members for their support too. If that is something you'd be interested in, check the links in the description. All the best and see you next time.